Well, I just finished my day here at Conneaut Lake Park, and man, I, I see the makings of a great park here. There were parts of this park that I just loved, like Devil's Den, great dark ride, but then there are other parts that it, it, where it just seems like the, this new management is doing more harm than good by removing so much stuff. Especially with that. So let's talk about it. Conneaut Lake Park is in serious danger. Before I get into this, I wasn't actually planning on visiting Conneaut at all this year. With the announcement that Blue Streak would be down for the season, I figured I could just wait and ride it next year. However, it quickly became obvious that there might not be a next season, so I made a trip to the park on one of their final operating days of the year. Conneaut Lake is a park full of history, with nearly 130 years of operation behind it, but it hasn't exactly been a smooth ride. The park has struggled financially on several occasions, leading to periods of closure leaving the park's future in question. However, the park has always bounced back, thanks in part to efforts by the local community as well as coaster enthusiast groups helping to keep the park alive. Until 2020, Conneaut seemed to be on a steady uphill slope, incorporating small but thoughtful new additions each year that really made it appear as though the park had secured a new lease on life. But when the park was unable to open in 2020 because of the pandemic, it found itself in financial distress once again. The sale of the park to real estate developer Todd Joseph in March 2021 brought about both optimism and skepticism. Despite promises to preserve the park's history, Joseph's first course of action upset nearly everyone. Under the guise of renovating blighted areas of the park, numerous buildings were demolished. This included the park's gift shop and an entire midway leading to the lake itself, leaving an empty field behind. The park's classic Blue Streak wooden coaster, one of only two coasters designed by Edward Vettel still operating, was announced to be closed for the entire year. Things got even worse in May, when the park announced they would be removing their unique tumblebug ride, one of only two left in the world. Despite an outcry from fans of the park, as well as operating just fine in 2019, the ride was removed, and nothing went in its place. Are you starting to see a trend here? Now the only tumblebug left in operation is Kennywood Park's Turtle. All in all, the new management seemed to be doing a pretty good job at angering their customer base, but the constant rumors about Blue Streak are what finally got me to visit the park near the end of their season. When walking up to the park, something just felt off. I couldn't put my finger on it, but several aspects of the park just felt like corners were cut. The fountain at the entrance was turned off, and they were charging for admission at the front gate. This is not how the park normally operates, usually it's a pay-per-ride system, but on this day it was a one-time admission fee. Chain-link fences had been installed around the park's perimeter in an attempt to enforce the one-time admission fee, but you could tell that the park was not designed to be fenced in, and I feel it kind of ruined the appearance of the entrance plaza. Various new rides were brought into the park this year, but all of them are rides that wouldn't be uncommon at a traveling fair, and they could all be removed with minimal effort. Most of these new rides were not operating, and I could tell that the park as a whole was extremely short-staffed, but this is a problem most businesses are facing, so I won't hold that against the park. What I will hold against them, though, is that despite the promise of placing Tumblebug's cars around the park as photo ops, they've all been removed. That lasted about a month. The carousel was not operating on the day I visited, giving the pavilion an eerie vibe while I was in there. It was like something you'd see in an urbex video. The park's miniature train had already been removed, as was announced earlier this year, but the way the tracks were removed appeared as though they were creating a demolition path straight toward Blue Streak. Despite this, the mini golf course was actually open, which I was pretty happy to see. Needless to say, my level of concern only grew over the course of my visit. Despite all these negatives though, I saw signs of greatness where the park's unique history shined through. Devil's Den is a rare and immaculately maintained pretzel dark ride, one of only two left in operation, and if you count it as a coaster, then it was actually my 100th credit. It's worth multiple rides just to see everything inside. The park's location is also unique, smack in the middle of a lakeside town where the lines between park pathways and public roads are blurred significantly, and the lakeside itself is a lively and beautiful area with the historic Hotel Conneaut nearby. It pains me to see what's becoming of this park, as it's becoming more and more obvious that Todd Joseph only acquired this property because of its location. Having to walk past Blue Streak standing but not operating didn't help matters, and there was actually a group of enthusiasts holding a rally across the road for Blue Streak to be saved. At the time of my visit, there were already rumors that Mr. Joseph had been seeking estimates for the removal of the coaster, but things got even worse the following week, when listings appeared on usedrides.com for most of Conneaut Lake's remaining rides, including the new rides that were brought in this year. 
If there was ever any doubt, this was the evidence needed to prove that Todd Joseph only purchased Conneaut Lake with the intention of bulldozing the park. New reports suggest he plans to construct a trailer park on the site, but I don't know about you guys, I'd much rather have a historic and unique amusement park. This leaves the fate of attractions like Blue Streak and Devil's Den up in the air. Blue Streak was apparently also listed for sale on usedrides.com, but I can't find the listing, so it's probably been removed. As sad as it is, Blue Streak will most likely just end up getting demolished, as I don't see it getting relocated. It's probably not worth the effort to Joseph, who famously avoided questions about the park, claiming that the football season was more important. Not to everyone, man. Not to everyone. Oh, and those enthusiasts who were rallying to save Blue Streak while I was there? Joseph actually showed up in person to address them, and he called the police on them, claiming they were trespassing on his property. What a stand-up guy. Joseph may even be in direct violation of the law with everything he has removed from the park. For those unaware, a covenant was placed on the park back in 2013 with the intention of preserving the park's status as a historic location. Although the park's ownership has changed, this covenant is passed down to all subsequent owners, and this includes Todd Joseph. According to the terms listed, owners of the park are required to maintain and operate many of the park's historic structures, including Blue Streak, the Carousel, and the Hotel Conneaut. This covenant lasts until the year 2028, and what this means is that whoever owns Conneaut Lake until then is legally required to notify the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission of any demolition they plan to carry out. It must then be approved by the commission, and approval is not always guaranteed. Some people local to the area have already contacted the commission, and they confirmed that Joseph did not notify them of any of the building or ride removals. It's possible that he didn't realize the covenant existed, but he still is in violation of its terms and this could even lead to legal issues. This only adds to the list of bad decisions being made by the current management of the park, and something needs to be done before anything else of importance is removed. Honestly, this whole situation is more frustrating than anything else. This park deserves to be saved, not just for enthusiasts, but for the generations of locals who have kept it going this whole time with nothing but passion and a drive to preserve what they grew up with. The fact that all it took was one man to come in and undo nearly a decade of progress from an uphill battle just angers me to no end. I really hope I'm wrong, but I'm beginning to realize that my first visit to Conneaut Lake is likely going to be my only visit. Despite the fact that I never got to see the park at its best, I'm still glad I made the trip and captured as much footage as I could. It might not be around for much longer, but it was worth it for Devil's Den alone. I know you all are going to have opinions on this whole situation, so I encourage you to leave a comment on this video. Just remember to keep things civil, I don't want to see any hostility down there. Let's hope that I can make a video next year about Blue Streak reopening, but only time will tell. With all that being said, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more coaster content here on Rampaging Rex Productions.